Greg was tough because we didn't know what to expect. You know, he's so high energy, you know what I mean? He knows so much about everything. And we were just kind of learning about his product. Yeah. And I was like, all right. Then he, oh, we he came waited. around, dude. We, yeah, he was in a hurry. Like, he just had a half hour. And we sat for like an hour and 10 minutes. Yeah, I feel like Greg says he's a half an hour and a half. hour. was turned into an hour and a half. Well, he's yeah. a busy guy, right? Yeah. But I, and I thought he kind of took us like, we're young and, you know, and everything's. And then the next thing you know, he sat down for like an hour and 10 minutes and he. We had a good conversation. We had a really good oh. conversation. Well, she just so loves his product, too. And like loves, loves that the not just the product, but the actual the scenery. I mean, yeah. like the whole, like, being in the industry, dude. Like, he's. Takes a lot of pride in it, for sure. Yeah, definitely. That's why that word comes up a lot for us. Yeah. Pride. Oh, yeah. yeah there right. you go. <laughs> we, take pride, we take pride in take it. Take pride dude. in it all, Everything, right? Everything, yeah. I yeah. mean, you have to. It, it, that's even going from starting to wash in the trucks. Yeah. I mean, that starts out. You know, how you treat your shop, how you treat your equipment. It doesn't just start out about the work. It gets, starts out about how you show up on that job site, how you're dressed, how you look, are you yep. all matching, your team, all that. Yeah, we get to get to that name. How how did that name uh, so, arrive? So Pride Hardscape originally uh, started with Pride Landscape Maintenance. So I've been, I actually took care of one yard from I was 11 years old till I was 34. So for 23 years, I took care of, my dad actually started that business as Pride Landscape. He started you young, man. You were illegal. For that's sure. a, yeah, that's illegal. Eleven <laughs> years old. Oh wow. yeah, dude. For sure. Yeah, for sure. I, yeah, no, I mean, like, so my. my we were talking last night. You were saying eleven. I was like, wow. Dude. I think I guess I started working when I was eleven, though. Yeah, Doing, you know. Yeah, and I was lucky enough to actually have it because my dad said if I wanted to play sports, I got to pay for half my stuff. Yeah. So if I want that three hundred dollar baseball bat, I had to pay for one hundred fifty bucks of yeah. it. You know, they don't that do that nowadays. Well, I, I would say, I wouldn't say my son will what, do that. Parents. Yeah. And I think that's how you were. You know what I mean? That's how you were brought up. Yeah. And I think sometimes. It's lost. It's been or, lost. It's or been lost now. Maybe they the try to spoil generation. their kids now, and they're like trying to give them more and not making help. them. Right, doesn't it help. doesn't help. You it enable sets, them. Yeah, you're yeah. enabling them. You it know, sets a not, bad precedent. Yeah, I, I mean, think. my punishment when I was seven years old was, hey, move that five yards of gravel from that side of the house to that side of the house when I got in trouble. Yeah. Well, I mean, literally, that's what I was raised to do. So I'm not saying that's how you have to do it, but at the same time, that's where pride came along. Was Your my dad, dad started the business. Dad started the business. Wow. And then... He had it, he worked 33 years at a school district and he had that side business that whole time, 10, 15 years. That paid for his toys. He loved Harleys. Yeah. Um, and then he got- So a, it was a side hustle. Really. Side hustle, yeah. yeah. I mean, my dad was just like me, a hustler, sell, sell, sell. He did yep. sold cars on the side, whatever he could do. Um, we came from middle class, you know, yep. nothing fancy. Uh, when we first lived in, we lived in a single wide with three family. So wow. came from nothing. Uh, but- the whole thing is he got in a bad motorcycle wreck. That's actually what brought me back to Oregon was, uh, it's been 12 years now. I think 12 years, my dad got in a pretty horrible motorcycle wreck mm. and I had to come back to take care of his business. And also cause kind of take care of his house yeah. and mortgage, all that stuff. So I got a uh, brought back. I was living in Arizona at the time. And then I came back, started mowing lawns and his wreck. He never really fully recovered from his wreck. He's alive still, but he's not, he's pretty much bedridden. So Really? T yeah. So I took over the business um, and 30, 20, 26 yard accounts, I think we had. I took it over in 2008. And then when I sold it for five years ago, we had 78. Wow. Um, <clears throat> at one point we had 100. Uh, it was a small operation. Profits were good. But again, I was taking care of one yard account for 23 years. Mm. So I felt like I already had a career. Wow. Like that yeah. one, car, every single weekend I went and mowed, fertilized. Trim. I just woke up one day and I told my wife, Kayla, I was like, I'm done. She like, gave it all up. Yeah, and I literally gave it up. I didn't even sell the business. Wow. Why, why did you transition into the hardscape side? <clears throat> we were slowly getting more clients asking if we do the patio. So we were kind of, I mean, truthfully, like at first we were doing some illegal insults, you know, yeah. we have to have a license in Oregon to install patio. Really? Oh, wow. So you have to have a contractor's license. Actually, you have to have, to be a full blown landscaper, you have to have eight licenses in Oregon. Wow. It's an LLCB and a contractor's license. So like I can go build a million dollar home, but I can't go plant a plant. So hmm. it's just this weird, and I can't go do irrigation. I can't lay sod. So, like, all this stuff is part of this. So, we don't have a... You think that helps the industry? I think Through certification? I think it does. Yeah. I think it does because it's, it's the customers are getting... Um, if that person suggests ferns and they put them in full sun, you know, like, something like that. Like, where yeah. you're actually getting someone that knows plant knowledge. You're knowing someone that's going to put the proper soil in for your yard to survive and you're not just throwing on top. Now, does every contractor do that that has a license? <laughs> no. no. They don't. So... 
you know, it's a catch 22 there, yeah. but I think the licenses, you know, we, uh, we actually got fined. The reason we got our license was cause we got fined, yeah. um, we got fined $5,000 for installing a product. Wow. Or a water feature. So actually, what, <laughs> here we are at Oxygen. Yeah, so what does exactly. it take to get certified out there? As I mean, it's a, a class. Like a it's, it's just courses, courses, courses yeah. like right now. Um, and then you have to have uh, reoccurring education. So you have to get your hours like going and learn. Like next weekend, I'm uh, going up to Portland for structure and tree, and you can get five hours of education time. You have to have thirty hours a year. So you every year you have to pretty much renew. Yeah, go to a course, you go to a course and, and show your hours. Yeah, every year, and it's one hundred and fifty. But it's only one hundred fifty dollars a year. And then you have to have your workers' comp insurance liability, yep. same as yeah, everybody else. Basic stuff. Now, you do that as an owner. Do, does your employees have to do that as well? With no. You? So right now is I'm actually my one employee right now is he actually has our license and we're separating. So right now I'm actually going to be going and filing for my CCB. Um, and then we'll keep the same number. We have yep. CCB number and I'll keep the same number. But no, there has to be someone on site, though. I have to be within a phone call away. Okay. I have to be the RI. So I have to be the instant response where I have to be at least, I think it's three hours away. Or you have to have someone responsible in that vicinity, which okay. I do my foreman right now, which I'll change that when we go through that transition of downsizing, yeah. which we'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's good for the industry to have licenses. Yeah. You're not getting it. too. I, you're you not going to have the get pickup truck guy that, with a shovel. And, and it helps you. It helps you as someone that is successful and someone that does do good installs. It helps you as well because they're now looking at looking up your license. Yeah. They know you're certified. They know this. So it's kind of a reassuring to them that you are licensed, but don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people still doing. Yeah. There's still yeah. hacks out there for And sure. I call them in. <laughs> I call the CCB board. Oh, really? Oh, I'm that guy. Yeah. You have to be. I mean, it's business is business. So yeah. you're going to get your, I mean, I was doing it too when I started and yeah. I got caught. So like someone called me in. So if I see someone doing like one project, I'm not going to say anything, but right. if I like start seeing them install multiple products, we're a small area where we live. Right. Right. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows yeah. my trucks, equipment, like, you can start makes the industry better though. Yeah, it does. And then they might go get their license. They get a warning. The first one, they get a warning. Uh, but the CCB, literally, it, they have a board. I think there's seven people that patrol Oregon. They just go look for people installing stuff oh illegally. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, and it's like I said, the first one's a warning, and then it's a $5,000 fine, and then it's a $25,000 fine what, the second time. What about like a homeowner? So, we got a lot of do-it-yourself kind of people. Doesn't matter. So, or if you, do it. you say, man, I, I'm not paying you right i want to do it on my own yep that's fine and i'm the homeowner i can go in my backyard and install yep. a patio yeah no problem yeah it's just for the contractor mostly yeah so the, you're you're protecting the homeowner if they want to install a crappy patio yeah then let the homeowner go install a crappy patio right. but yeah. if they want a certified contractor where you get one guy coming in and say he's going to do this much and do this where like half our bids people go they're going to install three to four inches of gravel it's like that's they're basically looking out for the homeowners and it's like an insurance policy to a certain extent, I would say. Yeah, and then or we have to also, on bigger homeowner. projects, over 50000 you got to take a lien on the property. Wow. For it to protect the homeowner. So there's a lot of, I mean, I, I bet you a lot of people in Oregon. protects you, too, to get paid, 100%. Too. Yeah, 100%. definitely. So, like, a lot of people don't know this. In the state of Oregon, over $50,000, you have to do this. So right. if people listen to me in Oregon and Washington right now, like, I bet you 95% of them aren't doing this. Wow. And it's the law. Wow. Oh, that's different. But that's you, no, different. Everything wants to be protected there. So they just want to protect everybody and make yeah. sure they're safe because a lot of people I go talk to on these jobs are like, it's hard for them to spend this type of money because they've been burned once by someone that did a crappy job. Yeah. So th now you're going through that part of like, they've already been burned before because a lot, there is a lot of illegal contractors where we work. And I think all over the States. I mean, I don't know what your guys' policy is on contractors, but... Do yeah, you guys no, have anything like that board? No certification. No. ICPI, I, MCMA, that's about it. But, but that's, that's, that's optional. That's just optional, yeah. yeah. We're not even that because they don't approve an open graded base yet. They just, right, yeah. So how are we going to be certified when that's all we do? Yeah, and talking about different, in Oregon, I mean, it rains a lot, right? Oh, so yeah. all of your job sites are pretty much I, open base. We switched uh, two and a half years ago, three years ago. Wow. I just literally, the transition was definitely, my guys at first were like, this is what, this is horrible. Why are we switching? And then I, then finally, after like a few installs, they're like, this is amazing. Probably. I mean, you don't three quarter crushed, right? When you got scree bars sitting out three quarter crush. I mean, you got to get like perfect to set those scree bars out. Right. You yep. don't have like play. Yep. Where with open graded bases, it's 85 to 90% compacted when you dump it out of the dump truck. Yep. That's so key. That's huge. You're, you're not compacting, you're placing rock, right? You're like getting that compaction down and you're placing. So then when you got your scree bars and you're off by that eighth quarter, Tamp them down. Where on three quarter crush, you couldn't you couldn't have no adjustment. 
Yeah. So it was now already yeah. too compact. It was already too compact. So now yeah. you're sh- scraping the gravel and also crushed gravel thaws, freezes, compacts, hold moisture. Yep. And then sand, you put sand in that, then you're holding moisture in those pavers even longer. Yep. So they're never possibly, they're creating moisture, which moisture brings efflorescence out. Right, right. So you're literally, the people that are making this product are telling you how to install this, and it's actually weakening the product. Yeah. So the open grade at base, to me, the Romes have been driving on the roads for how long? 2,200 years? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're still driving on the roads they built with open grade at base. Yeah. With no engineering. And our roads fall apart after 10 years of being asphalt by engineers. Now, what are you using for your joints? Uh, so when we we have been using more permeable pavers than that is, is because we're getting we're getting easy joint into our point. So we're doing a, it's not like poly sand. It's a wet right. application. Yeah. So it's, it's like a resin. It's a resin. Exactly. Yeah. So we love easy joint. It's one of the only products we can get where we're at right now. Yep. Um, SEK just came out with another one that I'm going to try for sure. Um, but I've been what using about just an eighth chip or. Uh, so, yeah. So that's the other thing is SEK makes the eighth chip. We just started using those. But our manufacturer, Western Interlock, we love their product. Shout out to them. They're an awesome company to work with. Um, they need to, we need to make the gaps bigger. Yeah. We, you know, we, we the only tabs on the pavers need to be bigger they, because we can only get poly sand into their gaps right now. So the reason we're switching to permeable is is to get that wet application because then we're not having to come back next summer to poly sand. So all these jobs, we get eight months of rain, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So tell me my season to sand and seal. Yeah. And plus your poly sand is never setting up. If it's not drying. Then your pavers have sand underneath them yeah. that hold moisture through June. Yeah. Wow. So you, and then all of a sudden it's July, it's 90 to 100. So I watch you on Instagram. Sometimes I feel bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for my ears sometimes. I'm not, luckily I'm not, uh, you know. You got I, a lot of rain jackets. We have a lot of rain. If you are, if you come to our town and you have an umbrella, we know you're not from out of state. We know from your out of state. Yeah. You wear a rain jacket. We're at we wear a rain jacket. They, yeah. That easy joints made for your state. They probably made it for the state of Oregon. Well, England, with how I much mean, it rains. Literally, like, I mean, it's, and, and you don't have to go back to the job. Yeah. 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 Like, that's the huge, and you like. you can do it when it's raining. Pouring. It's yeah. amazing. It's yeah. better when it's wet, right? Yeah. Everything's wetter better. the better, Wetter right? the better, yeah. right? Everything, dude. Wetter the better, dude. Uh, yeah, we saw a lot of easy joint. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Right. Nitro, like the, and Nitro I like, from I like, Alliance. I like, I like the name, too. Yeah. Easy, easy joint, Yeah, easy, It's like easy. almost somebody's running easy riders. I mean, like the, a, lot of, a lot of our guys are so used to doing polymeric sand. Like, the, the wet stuff goes in. It takes a little bit more time to do it. Yeah, but have you seen the new brush, that pave tool? With the the water that's attached to it. Yeah, Mulder Outdoor and J Square. Yep. I've been talking to them, uh, messaging them, and they said, I asked them, because I saw it in person at H&A, and it's, it's huge. Yeah. I mean, like, it's four foot wide, and I'm like... It relieves <laughs> having another guy there with 100%. you ha- having to hold a hose. So you 100%. can just have that brush yeah. with the water coming out. Yeah, and then the, 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 you the power brush. Yeah, have to. yeah, that's yeah. The, that's the. But again, our gaps from our providers. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what that. What is that called? I mean, again, I don't. I don't the, know the, the spacer tech, tab. The spacer tab. So yes, yeah. So yeah. like, yeah, we they're gonna start possibly making that bigger here soon. They have to. I mean, that's a, a big. Complaint I feel like that poly sand too. is, my opinion, poly sand's the past. I don't think poly sand is gonna be around forever. I think it. I think products like this resin are gonna take yep. over. I honestly believe in that too. Okay. I think they have to do something. Yeah, eventually to eliminate poly sand. Well, we talk about where you're at. You you can't get like Techo Block. No. So Techo Block has a lot of pavers that because of the gaps thick. Yeah. Like your blue sixties. A lot of these are permeable. Blue Grande. Yeah, blue, yeah. That's what I want. That's what I'm saying. Oh so God. a lot of them yeah. are already permeable. So you can use Easy Joint on a lot of those. Yes, and yeah. that's that's All what Techo. So you're limited for the products you can get where you're at as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and we have Belgard, um, but Belgard's product touches three people before we get it. And mm. it comes 75% of the time, a quarter to half the pallet is chipped or just not good product. That's crazy. And that's for us is, you know, we have Western. They stand by their product. They're a great company to work with, like I said before. But um, we're now recently starting with cast stone pavers, which they're a wet cast paver. So that's something I'm kind of getting into as well because yeah. I like the wet cast. If they're actual, they, they don't press them. They're a wet process. They dry wet. Yeah. So it takes a lot longer to make them for them. But What's the finish it, on it? So it, does it have a wet cast look it does, to it? It does, dude. It's so it aw- looks pretty good. It looks really good. So yeah. I was actually going to say, like, the product, they're actually going to be going out in Texas. So they're starting to expand out from our local Washington area. So they're in Olympia, Washington. Wow. Um, they're in all of the site ones across the country, yeah. I think, pretty much. But uh, their product's awesome. And they actually, their gaps, their tabs, are they have some only two or three different pavers. Yeah. But they have the bigger tabs. So you can put... 
the yeah. easy joint, yeah. the SEK, the nitro, what, you know, whatever that is going in. That's got to make it pretty hard for you because you're so limited on the products that you can use and you're making everything permeable. It's hard. Like, so it, it narrows down everything. To, yeah. You for, have to use only a specific amount of pavers. Yeah, and like it's and to, work. to create art, like because I think hardscape is art. Oh, it's yeah, not you're just, definitely an artist. Yeah, I and that's tell. that's what we want to do yeah. is is bring that different. We don't want your neighbor. We don't want that neighbor to have that patio next to you. Yeah, we want you something to stand different. out. Yeah, something yeah. different. And that's why also we're going to be pushing a lot of porcelain this year. Yeah. We talked about this last night. Yeah. Um, I think you know you guys are already selling a lot of that product over there. You know that's and I think porcelain is the new wave of hardscapes because Portland's porcelain has been very hot. Uh, mid-century inside for the past three years yeah so what's hot on the inside goes outside yeah yeah, yeah. it's really starting to take a it, command i mean dude and you're Porcelain. only talking square foot cost is only not three much. to five dollars more yeah not much like if, if you're getting that well, anyway out with there. us it's not yeah you're yeah. getting big money out there anyway yeah i mean like if but you got to bring it yeah you can yeah you got to bring it you cannot sell what we're selling and not bring it like right. you can't just put a you know, one single border charcoal border around a Cambridge brand patio. You got to bring a triple border or a four. You know, you have or inlay, and I call it like laying rugs. I love laying rugs, putting a middle of a uh, paver patio and putting yeah, an area put for an a table. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the coolest. It's a where, cool look. Yeah, it's a cool look, and it takes your eyes away from everything else. But also, you got to bid that right. Yeah, yeah, all the cuts. Oh, all the f- putting. It's a lot more f- work too. Oh, and also now you're going to where you're getting twenty three percent waste. Yeah. So you got to bid for that where like a normal square patio, you're getting 10, 15% waste. And now you're putting 45s and inlays. You're starting getting 30% waste possibly. Yep. Yeah. You got to bid that in your job because that waste will ruin you. Yeah. That's big money. It's big money. When you <laughs> we remember we did it with Richard from our, and he had to cut all those, what were they? Uh, squadras? Squadra. Oh yeah. You that, know, and th- yep. that's, I mean, those are three well, and Dan, a half. dude. Three by three. Three by Just three pavers. Dan Preston did that, like, I mean, all his stuff is crazy, Dan, yeah, but I mean, beautiful. he did that one, uh, the mountain range. Yeah, it's all... 30, 35% waste. Yeah, it's crazy. Holy, that's a lot of waste. All Unilock product, too. It was beautiful. I mean, it was gorgeous. Yeah. But it's like I, that logo of the mountain. Oh, dude, it was... Yeah. As a guy, it's on that level, dude. Yeah, on that <laughs> level, dude, which hopefully I see him tonight. Hopefully he comes hang out with us. Yeah. <laughs> how, how long do you think this trend's going to hang on, though? Like, the inlays and stuff. Do you think it'll ever I go I think back? it just started, dude. I think the creativity... <laughs> of like you guys the double border and you guys age. influence each other right so oh, you yeah. preston rc sean yeah. all you guys you influence you guys try to up each other you know yeah, you're I, I, in I your mind I think, but i don't think it's and it's not competition like you said it's oh, healthy, healthy. It's yeah healthy. It yeah. it's like so like I, I joke with j squared and i was like hey you never use boulders in your stuff until i came along and all of a sudden <laughs> these people are all of a sudden these, i mean boulders been around for a while don't be wrong but yeah. like if you look at his designs two or three years ago, my designs are changing too. Yeah. Like it's like, you have to, we're always changing, but we still throw in our flow. And my flow is I love bringing nature meeting hardscape. Yes. I love when that 2000 pound boulder hits against that wall, you cut it all out. My guys just do that perfect cut. So yep. You're just looking at this and you're on, you put a light right there. It's like, it's funny you say that too, because I think social media can, um, influence. Yeah, it can influence what we sell, right? Because our number one seller are Seneca boulders. We sell it. I mean, you can't keep them in stock. You know what I mean? So and we don't if, have anything like that. Right, right. You give I me know. some. Well, e- I, I build boulder walls out of like, I got to go pick my rock and like, <laughs> like set out. All right. You we guys, palletize you them for go, you. I'm like, I'm like. This one know what it sounds like? It sounds like Sensenik is going to have to set up a truckload to send out to yeah, Yukon Valley. Yep. Yeah. Yukon yeah. Valley Yukon Natural Stone. and some pavers, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. And Unilock, <laughs> dude, for sure. Yeah, yeah and I think it's, it's, that's the thing that we talk about, though, like why we do this, right? So the East Coast is getting away from wet cast. Why is that? Like Tackle Block, they, um, Cambridge. And we don't really know, but. Uh, what they go? They went back to a dry cash, right? Yep. I think the process is too we're, much. We're ten years behind you. It's crazy. Yeah, we think ten, it's that much. Oh, oh, hands down. We're ten t- years. Ten years. We yeah. are. Te- we are ten years, and that's why I am. I feel like on the West Coast, there's some. But people, your designs don't look like it. Well, the, I, here we go back design. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you can sell it, if yeah. you can design it and sell it, they're gonna want it. Yeah. So Just the product itself is. Because of shipping and stuff. It's just ridiculous. And there's no manufacturing yeah. out there. No, and that's why I think porcelain is the next phase for us because we can get big format 18 by 48s. I mean, I'm trying to do a design right now with 18 by 48 herringbone style. 
Holy I cow. mean, that would look. That's nice, though. Yeah, it shouldn't. 18, I mean, yeah. Oh, 18 I mean, by 48. Make me feel small. I'm a big guy. Like, I want to walk <laughs> out there and, like, feel like, you know, it's. But just, you got all the equipment for that, too. Yeah, we got all the vacuum machines. And that's why I'm saying is, like, nowhere, nowhere, but there's, like, two companies where I'm at with an hour that have two to three that have, like, the type of stuff we have. You're doing it right. And, and we're bringing in, I feel like we're getting, uh, like, our employees. A lot of our Instagram following, I was talking to you last night, is like 17 to 24. Like 30% of our followers is young. Like young. And some, and we have a 13 to 8, a 13 to 17 is like 10%. That's very inspirational, though. And I know Chris does a good job, too, because he does a lot of sales, a lot of, you know, he's got a lot of young guys that he's kind of brought up in the industry, actually kind of helping them. Even going on the job site, showing them how it's to awesome. do it. So, products, yeah. yeah. You know, if you're 17 to what? 24. 24. If any of those, you can influence any of those to become hardscapers. Dude. We need that we need as it. an industry. We're, we're until my kids' generation grow up, until my 35, 40 year old friends, until our kids grow up, we're screwed for 15 years. We're in a That's generation great. where it's work smarter, not harder. Yeah. Yeah. I think the younger generation realizes that they don't want to work as hard as. The older generation because it just especially in this industry because it does beat you up so much it used to it used to but now the equipment yeah. so that they have yeah that's the whole work smarter I, I, just even those grabos for simple grabos, things yeah, I, mean, it, it, vacuums, dude, it's so, I, mean, I mean we can go off and off of course. Yeah. when i started i didn't see an excavator skid steer till i was 21 so i did for seven all for hand four, bombing all hand bombing, pickaxe wheelbarrow I call it a Chenard's back where I, where I started and like all of our old friends that used to work there, like we have a Chenard's back because we, we beat ourselves down. Yeah, yeah. But that also made you who you are today too. Oh, and don't get me wrong. When I have a new kid start, you start them rough. But, oh, <laughs> yeah. But then, but then I say, Hey, get into this brand new Mac dump truck and go take a load. And they're like, nice. Yeah. Oh, like, oh, what's this little switch do? Oh, it turns on those lights. Oh, this, you know, they get excited. It makes you appreciate yeah. it yeah. more. Yeah. These kids growing up nowadays when they're starting out with the suction, like they don't know what it actually was like to actually wheelbarrow or have to yeah. lift pavers by hand and bending over to set those slabs. I mean, we haven't used a wheelbarrow in a year. Yeah. That's nuts. We all grew That's up nuts. using our hands. I mean, I still got, I got podcast hands. Now. I'm used you to still dig use it. I'm used to I got digging calluses things all over, dude. My, my, my son always asks what these are, and I'm like. You guys are climbing that rope last night. Oh, I was I like, dude, that, that's going to hurt my hands. No, yeah. I did it. But somehow. I used to have calluses. You know, I worked in a brickyard for 20 time. years. You know, and I did side You're jobs You're a good size for like Brickyard, that. short little guy. You yeah, know, you man. Get, yeah, you yeah, but I had to lift over, like, the, you know, uh, it was yeah, tough, man. For sure. And I was the grunt. <laughs> you were the was, grunt. I was yeah. the grunt. I was everything, man. I was, I mean, I've I've gone from, and that's where operating when I was a young age, my dad, luckily enough, had, like, you know, bigger riding lawnmowers, yeah. some tractors. Whatever. So I was always on machines younger. I always, I like machines. Yeah. Um, and, like I said, nowadays it's getting to the point where it's just nice for to go to the job site and know that your machine's going to work for you. Yeah. Where an employee, okay, get this. An employee costs you thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year. Say just a normal move the wheelbarrow around. We start out at $21 an hour where we live. Start out. Yeah. Yo. It's um, changed so much. Changed so much. I mean, it's crazy, right? So you take that employee and you take him for $37,000 a year and then you look at a machine that costs you $15,000 a year in payment. Say you put half down. Doesn't talk back to you. <laughs> shows up every, every day. Every day on time. <laughs> it might it might have some queaks. Might have a cold start. Might break something once in a while. Yeah. Might you can repair it. Break down right. You can repair while. it, right? Yep. So now, instead of buying that thirty some thousand dollar employee, you go find a $50,000 employee that you pay more that is in that machine. Yeah. And then you put those two together. That you could depend on every geez. day. It's a match made in it's heaven. It's a match made in heaven. You're like getting a, someone that cares about quality. And then also now they're getting in this machine that's lifting everything for them. And they're lifting these treads with the vacuum or the pave tool or the pr probes tool, whatever it is you have. There's all kinds of companies now. Yeah. So it's just so nice. Much. It's just nice to see it evolving yeah. where I feel like you can do this till you're 60 now. Yeah. And we were talking last night, your role and how it's changed a little bit. Yeah. Everybody out there, what is your role on a day to day now? It's kind of, I, I, it's kind of a cool role. Yeah. Man. So I mean, I, I recently it's changed quite a bit. So I'll tell you right now. Last year, guys, we had a six to eight man crew. We did two point five gross. Uh, we, we did a great year. But I worked ninety to hundred hours a week. Wow. I mean, I was, I honestly, I mean, I didn't see my family for a year, nothing. So like, I, I set, a, I set a goal for myself. I want to do two, two mil with six guys. Yeah. 
You did it. We did it. We went over it. We went over it. But Not profit was 15%. So, right. so that's when I was like, that's when I really started scaling back. I started looking at other companies across the country that I follow. I see what they're doing. You know, obviously they're a tight three to four man crew. A lot of these crews are three or four man crews. I'm like, well, how are you making this type of money? So now I've scaled back down. We have took about $20,000 overhead out of our payroll, equipments, um, everything. And now we're a three man crew. Uh, we have three guys that are in the field 24 7, or, you know, Monday through Thursday. We work four tens. My guys love that, yeah. by the way. So four days a week, really? Four days a week. Uh, th- this what about t- rain days? So, this say time, like right now, it's snowing where we live. Get out of here. Yeah, I know, right? It never snows. And it snows <laughs> when I'm gone, dude. Like, this is when I want to be there. Uh, it's snowing right now. So, the guys are, we got a brand new utility bed truck, and uh, we're literally, I told them to go outfit it. So literally, they're probably going to make two or three trips to Home Depot today, what they're going to do, and they're going to outfit that whole truck. So when we are at our two-month-long, month-long project, we don't have to take our enclosed trailer now off the job site. Right. We're going to have a truck with everything in it. So back to the process, about a three-man crew, um, I, I install, uh, I do the boulder walls. I do estimating for one. Estimating sales is my huge part. Yep. Um, synced ups helped a lot with my estimating, by the way. Um, but the sales part is my huge thing. As I do the sales, you got to sell it to install it. Yep. Tell everybody that in the industry. If you can't sell a job, you're not going to be able to install the job. Well, now you're saying uh, synced up. Is that kind of like an, uh, an accounting, accounting program? So program, so job tracking. So oh, okay. all, all your hours, everything. So it tracks everything. So like I can get on my phone right now and I can see my guys who are doing shop time. Yeah. And I'll see what there is. Like, we can go to each job site, seeing what materials we've spent. And who did you get that through? I mean, uh, West is that and, Zimmerman? Uh, yes. West yeah, Zimmerman. Yes, yeah, okay, Weston. Cool. So, and I, I mean, I think a lot of people have switched this year from, there's Element, there's Jobber. Yeah, there's, yeah. Is, that, is this fairly new, the sync then? It, it, it is this year. I think this year was his big. Yeah, they created that. that. Yeah, he created it from, and Weston, what's great about Weston is. Yeah. He worked for Tussie Landscape. Right. He's an Aquascape award-winning artist, and he, yeah. he's been in the in- industry. So he knows what we need. He saw a spot in the industry that needed something. Yeah, shout out to Tussies and Zimmerman. Oh, they buy dude. Yukon Valley Natural Stone from us. So. Oh, I'd yeah, love to go see guys. their Yeah, Tussie, I would love yeah. to go see their job sites. They do beautiful work. Yeah, I, I mean, do. they're next level. Um, but So I do the sales, and I do kind of the project manager. But my three guys now are on the sites. I'm letting them – I do the dig out. So you do the dig out. I do the dig out. So what I do is – we go to the job site. I take one of my clue points. So we don't, two guys only at every dig out. There's never more than two guys in my dig outs because you always get that third or fourth guy going. What am I going to do? Over what here? am I going to do? And while here? you got two guys at the dig out, the third and fourth guy are still they're, at the last job. They're at the last job okay. doing the final lighting, the bark mulching, the cleaning, the kind oh. of the final touch up. And then once that job's down to its final day, we have all the rough base in. We got all the underground sleeves in. She the prepped drainage, it all. Prepped it all. We're within an inch or two. My guys hate it when I try to get perfect base because I don't get perfect base. Right. That's not me. Yeah. I, I too hire, rough it. Yeah. I, I hire I hired people that I'm not good at doing stuff. Right. And that's being perfection in, and making it perfect base. I'm not good at that. So yep. that's what I hired out for. Um, they come in and then once the final product is done, I go back and do the final cleaning, the prettiness, wiping down the lights, wiping down gutters from the guys leaning on the house. Like I do the final cleanup and I stay there till about dark on that final day. Now, what does the final cleanup consist of? Your power washing? Are you cleaning the pavers? Everything. everything. I'm doing that. So that final day is literally depending on the size job, but like say it's a 600 square foot patio. That final day I am doing everything i'm like i'm washing their house for them i'm and i'm the owner yeah so like they're seeing this so i sold them this job right right so i was the first person on site and now i'm the last person on site so you gotta collect that check too yeah that's That's the the, cheddar i'm not gonna wait for a check that contract says that contract when it says when pressure washing is complete pride is paid i love that you pressure wash you know, for me, we sell a lot of cleaner, the BG-150 from Belgard, and it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. I wish every contractor would job cost that and clean every job. Well, you but know, it might be even... It's in our budget. That's what I'm saying. It's a, I have $1,200 for one day. You know, maybe sand haze or... You know what I mean? I yeah. think... Finish your just, product. Yes. Yes. You got to finish strong. You might have a little airflow on the pavers that... That it's going to take it all off. But also, also, if the FO doesn't come off, what do you do? You pull the pavers. You got extra pavers. You install it again. Exactly. And you're the you're you're selling this to the customer. That's his perfection. You're charging high end, and that final look's got to be perfect. Like yes. you, when you uh, pay a detailer to detail your car. Yeah. If you're unhappy, you're going to say something to him, right? Yeah, of course. 
Well, for some reason, clients with landscaping hard staff, they don't tell you until they write a bad review. Yeah. Yeah. So you we have a five-star review. You should never not have a five-star review if you completed everything on that contract. I love that about your your whole setup. I, yeah. that, that's one thing. Um, I think Somerset does it. I think they clean every job when they leave. Yeah. And I wish more contractors he, did it. He has the, you see some guys that won't even, like, they'll finish their patio. They won't do the mulch around. Nope, my, my part is done. You know what I mean? Like, even concrete guys, you see them just go in and they take pour their, their concrete. Forms off, take their forms off and leave it. And leave it. Like, you don't want to back up any one yard dirt of soil, to it. One like, y- anything. Yeah, one yard of soil. $40 in soil. <laughs> I think that just goes with the budget. Job you know, costing. Job, job costing. costing. You know, you, <laughs> he's, get, he's getting high end stuff. You know yeah, what I mean? They're yeah. paying for that whole shebang. You know, they're paying for they're paying for the pride experience. Yeah, they're not, they're not paying for another land. They're paying. That's for, right. They're, they're paying for the whole experience. You're paying for the. We're going to be videoing your job site. We're going to be putting a time lapse. We've had a couple customers come to me and go, "Hey, why is there no camera set up?" I go, "What do you mean there's camera set up?" They're like, well, we want to be on Instagram. <laughs> I literally like, I was like, are you serious right now? I'm like, I went and grabbed my phone, my personal phone. I went yeah. and set it up and I put that time lapse on for that. That's that great. reel got 1.5 million views. Holy wow. cow. At the end of that reel, that uh, job, that customer came up to me and goes, we love the patio and I can't believe we got 1.5 million views. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you're just like looking at them, but it's the whole experience. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's bringing all this in. And I'm so grateful to have my wife, Kaylee, who's in the actual room with us right now. Um, she's in the podcast right now, but. She's okay. amazing. She does everything for us. She does all the videoing. Um, it's just really gotcha. nice to have the social media influence because now customers want that. Yeah. Like they, they actually like now are like, well, we found you on Instagram. Now we actually want to be on your Instagram, which yeah. is, I think it's kind of cool. It's kind of like a, like one of our, the water feature we just did. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That water it's your feature. portfolio too. Holy cow. I mean, you, don't, you don't have to flip pages anymore. You just go out on your Instagram. Well, speaking of portfolios. For guys out there, if you don't have social media, the biggest portfolio you can have, Google search engine. Our Google search engine has 485 pictures on it. Wow. Every week we upload our new jobs and our new pictures. So what that Just does- Just to Google. What that does is, so now you're creating a cycle. You got Google, you got Instagram, you got Facebook, you got TikTok. Motion in action. Just wow. motion. You Just guys search. are smart. Yeah. Well, that's that's that. the first time, that's the first time I've ever heard that. So that so, yeah, that'd be very awesome. beneficial. But it starts out with Google, because if they look you up on Google, what's the next thing that's come right below that? It's going to say your Instagram page because you got a ten thousand followers. Now, is that an easy process to get on Google and and well, and well, upload, you upload all your? I'll upload. Our I can't tell you a person right now. Really? Wow. I mean, literally a Google account. You go sign up a Google account. Yep. That's not even I, and I literally I don't even set up in my name, so like the pictures don't look like they're coming from us. They, I just set up as a generic account. Yeah. And every week or every job we finish, like if you look, our last job we finished was the paver or the water feature. Water feature, yeah. It's on there. Wow. Speaking of that water feature. Oh, yeah. Man, that was beautiful. Oh, my God. It was what's so a, cool. It, we're at Aquascape, right? What, yeah. If you don't mind me, what's a water feature like that cost? Uh, I mean, ranging, depending on driving and all that, you're between sixty five to $85,000. Now, do you do it? How do you how do you price out a job like that? I mean, there's so many different elements to it. There is. And, like, that was a lot of travel time for us. So that was a little higher job. Like, it was a two-hour drive from our place. So you really got to calculate. I mean, in drive time alone, there were six grand. Oh, wow. my goodness. Wow. So you, again. Job costing. Job. <laughs> what? How long did that job take? Um, so it four took, days, right? So I was a, watching you. Two, two, two <laughs> I was a stalker. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I like it. I like stalkers. <laughs> Joe's yeah. the Instagram king. I was he sees the, everything. I was there. a stalker because <laughs> I hit you up and I was like, I can't wait to see this going process. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, so it took. It was a two day setup. So I set up everything by myself. So I didn't have any of my employees come out. I delivered all the rock. So like I was able. That water feature was a great access, dude. It was wide open. We could bring the dump truck dump right next to us. So my excavator had four piles of every material we needed within 20 feet. And how long was that water feature? I mean, from... Uh, from top to bottom was 65 feet. Wow. It doesn't look that long. No, I mean, that's what I'm saying, because you can see it the on... The stream's actually 30 feet. Wow. Like, the, the going in. And, and that was actually a fire retention pond. So there's a lot of companies putting in these fire retention ponds where we live because of all the fires that happened in Oregon recently in the past few years. So these people are putting the retention ponds in, and they're like, God, this thing's ugly. And this lady's like, well, can we do anything about it? I'm like, well, yeah, we could pump it and circulate it. Yeah. It's going to cost you 120 bucks a month to run the pumps, but like we can, we can make this look cool. And she's like, okay, she started out with a $10,000 budget. Wow. Mm. 
right up to <laughs> you eight times that. Yeah. <laughs> or so, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, and, like, and they, that client, Hillock Farms, they do gorgeous vet, went, wedding venues. So yeah. it was a really good oh, set. Oh, cool. She's awesome. I showed you guys my text last night from that client. I mean, yeah. like, she cusses like a sailor. It's awesome. <laughs> She'll laugh at this. She'll laugh Hold at on. this right now. I want to get into that. So. You met with this customer, and she gave you a ten thousand dollars budget off an Instagram post we did of another uh, off an Instagram post of a water feature. Explain how you went from ten thousand to a eighty thousand dollars job. The pride experience, her away. the pride experience. I mean, because we hear about yeah. this all the time. Uh, uh, you just you have to explain to them that when you start out, when you walk out, you just got to be blunt with them. Yeah, I'm a very upfront guy. Like this, I'm just, I'm man, just like this isn't ten thousand. This isn't ten thousand dollars. I said, yeah. I said, I started out sixty to eighty. Yeah. I said, I said, depending on how crazy we go, you know, and I like I gave her a, like I said, I was like, this is a 60 to $80,000 water feature. Like, you don't want this 10, like you're going to have people holding hands and making memories here. Like, yeah. so then you start not talking and you go, we have to do this. I bring, we, I never say I at a meeting or a consultation. Yeah. We, we, we you and the customer. Yeah. Not make them feel comfortable. I think we should do this. Yeah. That sounds just doesn't sound good. So we should do this together. We should put this here. And then they almost think it's their idea. Right. So yeah. now they're like, you get invited. And then once you kind of vibe with them. Because you welcome their ideas. Oh, 100%. Yeah, you have welcome. to. You have I to. Mean, it's their yeah. house. And then once you feel like you can kind of maybe throw some bait out there, that's when you start saying, hey, what about we throw some lighting in? Hey, why don't we do this? And then that's when that price range in their head, they realize, okay, this is going to go up for this. But you know, at the end of the day, the lighting, all those special effects, all Ice those little mask. extras are going to make it. I won't do a hardscape unless you do lighting. Right. You bye. won't even touch it. Bye. Like if someone gives, not sorry, it's rude. Say that. <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. But yeah, you, but it's. If, 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 I say I give you that's our estimate and they want to take out the $5,000 in lighting. No. Yeah. I'll, I'll go, we'll take out, I go, we'll lower your square footage and we'll do the lighting. I think that's yeah. what uh, Sean said a long time ago. Yeah, Premier. Yeah, he Premier. was like, I, yeah, no, the lighting's part of my design. I don't, it is. I don't know. It's an it, art form. Yeah. It's an it, adds a, it adds a whole nother Maybe we element. can take out the fire pit, but we can't take out the lighting. You can't. You know, maybe it's know. in the gas fire, but you do a regular one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Maybe you do a solo stove instead. Yeah. Maybe that's in your budget. But yeah. the lighting is. It's key. It, it gets dark it really at 4:30 is. in Oregon. Yeah, and you spend a lot of your time. A lot at a, night. A lot of your time. Enjoying your outdoor living space. Yes, and that's what it's all about. Enjoying your outdoor space, like bringing your inside to outside. That's what my whole thing is. So when I go meet a client, I look at their front door. First thing I do with Paver King. Yep. Yes, I love. Oh paper. yeah, yeah. Um, I love yeah. 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 He said a quote goes, "You can tell what a customer want by looking at their front door." So I can literally go into a design. Hey, I'm telling you all my tricks tricks out here, guys. Uh, <laughs> Let's hear it. Let's hear uh, it. <laughs> but when you walk into a house, like say you walk in and it's a square, perfect window, they're not going to like curves, right? Then you walk up and it's like a beauty, like you know, curved with some stained glass or something fancy. This person's going to want some artsy and frenzy stuff. Yeah. Like you can kind of get that vibe off just walking up to what they have and also looking at their cars. We talked about Fox Terra yesterday <sighs> and being in the mind of them. Dude, their approach is just like that. That's cool. Their approach is, I want to see the house first. I walk in. I ask. Yeah. I, like on bigger projects, pool projects, I go, I got to see your inside first. I, I don't want to see the outside. They're like, what do you mean? I go, I got to see your inside view. Yeah, your style, I go, everything. You, I go, you guys have been talking about this project for a year or two sitting, drinking coffee, where are you going to view this pool? Where are you going to view this outdoor living? And then right I go here. see it and I go, all right. <laughs> and then you see it with them and you're standing there with the client in their kitchen and you're staring there going, you guys feel this? Like you guys, you almost like feel chemistry happening. Yeah. Like if you get that and honestly, right away, I'll find out people don't want to work with me. I mean, right away. Right, you off, the bat, you right off. Any out. red flags, you bail. No, I don't bail. I still, they're paying for a consultation. They're paying for a visit. I oh, still give yeah. them an estimate. I still give them a bid. Yeah. But I'm saying is I know the, that the chemistry that I have with other clients, they're going to get a lot of better product when yeah. I feel that like connection, like we trust you. Yeah. And one of my big things is that I tell them these bigger projects is I want to take your sleepless nights away. I don't want you to worry about this. I want to, I want to lose sleep over your project. And that's a really big thing to clients is because they're getting this mindset. Like, dude, this guy's thinking about this project, like nonstop. He's nonstop. 
he takes pride in what he does. There we right go. There. Dude, we, we can say that all. We, we take, we take <laughs> pride. Hey, I Richard, Richard from RC times, Outdoors, we take pride in your yard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, God. Sorry. That's, that's an inside joke. Huh? We'll tag, we'll <laughs> tag Richard on that. Oh, okay. he'll, he'll appreciate he'll that, preach one. that one. Yeah, I can't wait to go see it. We're yeah, you're uh, going to see his job site, right? Uh, Thursday. I think Thursday. Thursday, right. We wanted to. We just. Yeah, I, you guys, I get anxiety, man. We're, we got all these trade shows and all this stuff going on. It's like live too far. Richard, It'd be nice if you guys all lived close. Richard right? texted me yesterday. He's like, dude, you coming down with uh, with Evan? I'm like, I wish we could, but maybe uh, me, Ben, and Chris could go visit him on a yeah. job site. Maybe He's got summer. a big one coming up in July. So, And that's the pool. That's his first pool, right? Yeah, that's a big one. I yeah. know. I'm like, I've been. But you know what? He's got a good surrounding. Any questions, he can hit yeah. you up. He can hit anybody Anybody. Up. Yeah. That's the nice thing about this community. Yeah. You know, it's like. We text or we, you know, we yeah. can talk to each other. We laugh, you know, yeah. about other things yeah, and stuff like that. And I think the Instagram community is great for everyone, even getting into the industry and who is in and it been in the industry for 30 years. Yeah. Like you say, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, I got taught new tricks. Yeah. You learn something new every day. I've been learning stuff right now at Pond Money. I mean, I'm, I'm right. learning. Oh, dude, listening to Greg talk about team, like we, we sweat together, you stay together. Yeah. Like stuff like that, I haven't heard for a Dude, long time. Dude, you answered that question last night. What? You were the only one that answered that yeah. question last night. I mean, but I'm just saying, is like, it's, I haven't heard that. <laughs> right. I haven't heard that since. Like, I honestly feel like what I did with my business last year was cool, right? Yeah. But I feel like I'm gonna make something better out of this now. Yeah. Like I feel like I'm gonna be more involved with my uh, crew, have them come and do barbecues. You know, we have a fun day every three months. So, like, I think that's a huge thing. Every four times a year, you guys need to take your crew out for a fun day. We go to Top Golf, we go do barbecue, whatever. Yeah. But it's just something you can do. And I just feel downsizing. I'm going to be able to be more involved with my employees, not and getting them to the where they want to be. Yep. Like, like you helping out these younger kids in the industry. Yeah. I honestly, like, that's something in West Coast. We have nothing like that. I would love to be able to afford to go on a West Coast tour and take my cool equipment and go to high schools and go to these whatever, even, even like, out like a Benton County, like a small community college, like stuff like that and go show them that this is, this is, can be a career and make money. Yeah, yeah for sure. I think, I think it'd be cool. Yeah. I think, you know, we do a good job at that at Sensenix too. It's because, uh, our culture yeah. in the building is like, we could bust chops with yeah. everybody, I whether just, you're I the yard guys, the truck driver, sales guys, we, you know, we can hang out, we can go get some drinks or, just us three you know what i mean we're just yeah. we're friends you guys, know what i mean that's guys what we find love themselves coming in and they get stuck there because they just enjoy contractors come in, yeah. we're talking we're laughing we're having but a also, good time also though they know that you get down to business yes yeah, and that's exactly. what's great about yeah. it too is like you can have that and like me and my wife were talking last night was we like everybody here was so nice yeah like it's not just from like the president came and just started talking to Kaylee like it was a normal person of occupancy. I'll offer a fifty eight million dollar company. Hey, the president's just gonna come hang out. Yeah. Yep. Like and it's just crazy the growth that you know what he's been through to see what happened to his building and everything here. Like bringing up this whole thing is like it's cool that when you can come in here and feel just like everybody's happy and welcome. Yeah. Like I want that walking into our even if it's three or four guys. Yep. I want them to feel like that. So now we started doing stretching in the morning. Like yoga. It right. saves, start doing yoga. It saves it's money cool. on insurance too, for once. Like too, you know. But you can literally I turn on some music. The guys walk in a circle. Now we do some stretching and we. It's hang funny out. you say that because we did the same thing because we have a challenge. So we put up our weight where we wanted to be by Labor Day. Okay. And then we do push ups, squats, mm -hmm. and and if we're not doing anything, that's what we do. We bought like a push up board. That's awesome. And that's all we do. I mean, all my day. guys move like six, 12,000 pounds of pounds. Yeah, so you don't have to do that. that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. But they do. They do. Yeah. Not. I don't yes. get me wrong. I'll still go out in the field if I need to. Like, yeah. uh, but I really just this year, I'm, I want to do the dig outs, water features, and boulder walls. Designs and sales. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, that's, I, but I still, uh, I'm putting myself in the field 20 hours a week. Yeah, I think that's great. Though. I cannot. Can't find yourself to get out of it. I can't. I can't right now. I mean, I just, I love being the atmosphere with the guys, the team, and just being there. And sometimes, like, when I go there, they're like, hey, we don't need you. Okay. It's yeah. not very nice. I know. But I kind of mm, get. But that's kind of <laughs> nice, though, that you it don't is feel nice. like. Yeah. I get in the way. You're in a yeah. good spot, then, because that's I, unheard of most of the time. Yeah, and I have But it's opinion. got your name behind it, too, though. So you have to at least. I do. You know, you don't want to lack any craftsmanship. And that's what I'm saying is the, the guys I have right now that are going to be coming on this spring 
I'm just really excited. Yeah. I'm really excited for this team coming this year. And yeah. I think it's going to be a good team for many years to come too. Yeah. And that's what I want to be is I want someone to have a career at our place. Like I want them to be able to think they can have retirement benefits, all that stuff, which we'll be starting implying that here soon. So yeah, same thing with us. I you think want retention. You want these guys staying for a long time. Yeah. I mean, my main guy is going to make 75, 80 grand a year. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Installing pavers. I mean, don't get me wrong. Installing pavers with a, some it's hard uh, work it's hard work man yeah. and to make it look good too yeah. like i mean you There's can't a lot that goes into it there is and i mean honestly guys should be making that much money they, if they're if they're doing good work like that why the heck not why not why and not? if you're making good money and you're passing it down they're happy they're yep. staying with you yep you're just gonna and see and your well. family and also well. you're buying new equipment you're yes. buying new trucks so your company's making money so you're investing back into the company and that's huge for the employees to see it's huge like you know they're like god this guy won't we buy shovels i've been i got one guy came over and said are we start working for us he goes dude our boss would never give us clothes and i'm like what i'm like he goes yeah he never bought his pants saying like that and the first thing i do is boots three pairs of pants Five shirts, three sweatshirts, jacket. That's what, what we do with everybody. Yeah. We do that with our sales I mean, I, guys, the I yard it, guys. I give it a month to make sure. Like, right, they're here. They're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, know. I mean. And they're running off with your Carhartt yeah, suit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Brand new <laughs> 200 Pride's giving away five, free Carhartt suits yeah, this week. Yeah, just come, yeah, just come <laughs> around. But I mean, also, I also tell them after a month, I go, if you show up on time, if you just show up on time, which on time to me, if I say seven, on time to me is 645. Yeah. That's, that's not. That's fair enough. That's, that's on time to me. And so I give them a dollar raise if they show up on time just for a month. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Like, literally, all you have to do is show up on That's time. That's enough incentive right there. Just for a month. Just show up on time. Is it that hard? Not, you don't even have to work hard. <laughs> just, show just show up. up. You know, just but it's up. it's nice to reward them quick, too, though. You have to. You know what I mean? Because then, like, then they see that there is their potential. Pos- there is potential. Yeah. And obviously, the stuff we're doing cool, and people just want to be a part of the... The, the whole pride atmosphere. Yeah. Like that's what's so really cool about it. It's, it's, we've created a vibe now where we live too, especially like I feel like we're one of the top companies around yeah. the area and there's great companies do great work, but they don't bring what we bring. We yeah. don't, they don't bring the 3d design. They don't bring the lighting aspect. They bring like just the pavers. Yeah. The water features. Yeah. Everything. That, that's exactly. And like I said, I'll, I always try to push water features, but they're hard. They are a hard sale. So. Yeah. I think Ben's writing on the board. Oh, was he right? Mention. No, this is a funny thing because again, <laughs> every podcast we sit down with, we you know we met face to face yesterday. Yeah. Really, or we actually met at H and A. At H and A, yeah. But we got a lot of time to talk about it yesterday, and it seems like everybody we meet, it's like we get down to a podcast. We say it's going to be a half hour, and it turns into an hour what because you can just oh, sit yeah, here. And I talk. Sounds in the background. Going like this <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a salesman, dude. Our batteries <laughs> are going to die. I'm, I'm, at the end of this podcast, Ben is very upset with us. Right now. We need to <laughs> the conversation <laughs> comes too easy. We yeah. could we could literally keep going. For you want to know hour. why? Because I've been doing this since I was 17 years old. He's been doing it since he's been 15 years old. You know, in the hardscape industry, you've been doing it since you're 11. You know, we've yeah. been doing this for years. It's and it's, life. Yeah, it's we lifestyle. love it. You can't talk about this stuff with do we talk about it we person. pull up and we're like dude those are uh it's in a herringbone pattern you know what i mean that's all we talk we about pull up to the hotel this is uh rich cliff with yeah, it's a pro via veneer oh. <laughs> you guys have really nice product here it must be nice yeah. <laughs> no, don't get me wrong we, we got good product but at the same time like yeah, yeah you guys got cool product to work with and that's my tomorrow i'm hoping to go to unilock try to get some of that stuff on the west coast yeah, yeah, that's what you guys need. Some tackle blocks, some Unilock. We have, we're lucky enough on the East Coast to have Cambridge as well. Cambridge yep. is probably, it's right up there with tackle block and Unilock. You know, we sell a lot of Cambridge as well. So they came out with a face mix. Same thing as um, Unilock and the HD2 from tackle block. So yeah, you guys are, I mean, like I said, guys. you guys. We do carry Bell Guard as well. You do? Yeah, yeah but Keystone. Yeah. Okay. Yukon Valley Natural Stone. You, can't. you guys carry everything, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you guys need material in New York. This is the guys, right? Here, right? <laughs> this is you, right? We we appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thank you for sitting down with us. Oh, this my is pleasure. pretty epic. You yeah. know, and I we're gonna be at H and A. H and A hey sponsored the Outdoor Project podcast. So we'd awesome. love to sit down with you at H and A again. Yeah, definitely next year I'll be there every year. This Sweet. was this was fun, man. Yeah. When's the when's the next time we're gonna get on here? I guess when I need to start a podcast, seems like yeah. <laughs> <laughs>